And we're literally seeing an epidemic of these issues in the United States right now. Dr. Robert Melillo is the co-founder of Brain Balance Centers. One out of every 10 children in the United States now is diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a real increase. My name is Dr. Robert Melillo. My life's mission is to help kids and families with special needs. My wife, Carolyn, makes it all possible. Welcome to our family. Hello and welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Robert Melillo, this is my wife Carolyn, and we are here because we feel the mainstream media has ignored the struggles of families and individuals with special needs. We understand your struggles and we are here to provide information, support, and to celebrate your differences. We want to highlight the heroic efforts of parents, loved ones, and anyone who struggles with a disability and to provide a place where you can come and share your stories and inspiration. We want to be the voice of the voiceless and to provide inspiration and most importantly, hope and support. Millions of families across this country in increasing numbers every year face unimaginable challenges on a daily basis and we are here to help. We feel that to those of you that need support, information and help, that it should be provided and to those that feel that your differences make you special, it should be celebrated and nurtured, but that no one should be left behind and ignored. We're here for you, the families, and brave people with special needs. We will provide cutting edge research and clinical insight as well as everyday practical tips and resources to help your life be easier. We will hope to inform, entertain, and humor, and most importantly, inspire you to never give up and to always have hope that this is the purpose of this show and we feel it's the most important issue of our time. Nothing is more important than the sacred bond between a parent and child and a family and you deserve only the best. Whether you're a child or an adult with mental illness or a physical disability, an adult with a brain injury or a neurodegenerative disorder, an adult with depression just trying to get by, you are important and you deserve a show that can speak to your needs and your differences. You know, each week we want to try to highlight a specific disability, and, and this week we want to focus on ADHD. Why ADHD? Because it's the single most common disability we see it's the number one disorder amongst childhood. It's the number one mental disorder amongst childhood, and it's quickly becoming one of the biggest problems in the adult community as well. Sure. We know that one in nine children in the United States have ADHD, one in five high school boys, and one in 11 high school girls. Wow. And just recently it was showed that one in 20 adults actually have ADHD at this point. It's amazing. Um, it's a real issue, and it almost always comes with OCD and Tourette's or tic disorders or what is more commonly known as STEMS. St what is STEMS? What are STEMS? STEMS are what people refer to when they look at children that do things like hand flapping mm -hmm. or waving. Uh, we see this in autism, but also just repetitive behaviors, even hyperactivity where a child can't stop. Is that OCD? Is that what is considered OCD or? Well, it's part of OCD, yeah, it, it, it can come along with it, but it really has a true neurological basis for it. It's not a psychological issue. So they can't help it? They can't control it? They can't, they, they often can't control it because there's a problem in the brain. Wow. And I, I'm sure a lot of parents don't realize that, that there's really, it's not the fault of the child at all and nothing they do or say can really make them stop. No, no. So, you know, there are these imbalances in the, neuro, in the neurological basis. So you're saying that it's not psychological, it's neurological. So what exactly is going on in the brain? Can you Let show us? Let me show you. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. So I'll come over here in my handy dandy thing here and what I drew here, and I'm not the artist you are, but what we have is a description of the brain from the side. And what's important to understand is that these are neurological issues and they're imbalances in neurological systems. So in the brain, in the frontal lobe area here, we have five areas. One that controls motor function or movement. Another that controls what we call executive function or thinking. We have another area that controls our eye movements. We have another area here that controls motivation and emotion. And another one that controls social skills. Together, all of these in combination make up almost every human behavior we have. And if we have a disruption in this, then it also can cause almost any major type of disorder that we see. Now what happens is that these five areas come down and converge into this area called the basal ganglia. And then they get filtered in here. And the basal ganglia either is going to turn them down or turn them up. And they're, either, and they're gonna activate another area called the thalamus 
which is really the gateway to the brain that ultimately will turn these areas on and make them go in different combinations or different strengths. So what we see is that almost all disorders like ADHD, OCD, tics, and stims is really an imbalance in this system between two of the two loops. One is called the direct pathway and the other is the indirect pathway. The direct pathway activates those areas, turns them on, turns up the volume. The indirect actually turns them down and reduces them. And so what we see is that if we have too much of the direct and too little of the indirect, we end up with hyperactivity or what we call hyperkinetic behavior. The other thing is that this can happen in injury, this could be a stroke, but in development it often happens because of an imbalance between the hemispheres because the right hemisphere activates something called the hyperdirect pathway which actually turns this down more. So the right hemisphere really shuts these things down, the left hemisphere activates them. So when we look at OCD, it would be, let's say, too much executive function, too much thinking. We see problems with motor activity like ADHD or tics or stims, we have too much motor activity. We have too much eye movement and we can't focus on someone's eyes. And so we, we have something like autism where we don't focus in the eyes. Too much motivation um, is, and problems with social skills is a balance of this. So it's all neurological and it makes sense and the good news is we can change this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually come back on the other side of this break and we're gonna sit down with Megan Fields whose son actually struggles with ADHD and talk to her. This is the Dr. Rob Show. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Robin Lillo and this is my wife Carolyn. We are pleased to be joined with Megan Fields. Megan's son, Connor, struggles with ADHD and other issues. Um, so why don't you tell us about your sons and what they go through? First of all, you know, did that relate to you, that little drawing I did about ADHD and OCD? Oh, definitely. Those, those are characteristics that I would use to label some of the issues that I have with their behaviors. So, um, so from a, a neurological perspective, your oldest son has ADHD and some OCD and some uh, tick type issues. And your younger son, what is, what is his struggles? Um, I've noticed him having a hard time becoming more defiant. Uh, whereas he, when he was younger, when he was closer to two, he would be more cooperative and listen and follow instructions better. And now it's, it's beyond the typical twos that people would call it. And, outright defiance, everything is no. Things that he used to do nicely, he now says no, and temper tantrums have escalated from, um, you know, maybe hollering and crying, but still going into timeout to now we throw objects and uh, intentionally lashing out towards people, so it's escalated. So having mm -hmm. two children, um, you know, that's incredibly challenging. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if, if most families or people out there, if they don't have a child with a disability, really understand. So give us mm -hmm. an idea of your biggest challenges and what sacrifices you make for your sons? Sure. Um, I think day to day and moment to moment you don't know what challenges are going to come so you kind of have to be prepared. Um, I, I focus on getting their needs met, literally just the basics. So as long as we get up and we eat and we uh, have we're clean and we're clothed and then we move on to education. Uh, my oldest is homeschooled so uh, we're able to sit down and focus on that, but um, those are the things I focus on. We don't get to focus too much on what kind of fun things do we have until the other things are completed. It just takes a lot longer to get there. That must be very hard as a mother because you mm -hmm. do want to do the fun things with your children, but mm -hmm. there's so much that you have to do before you even get to do that. Um, and, and what about yourself? Let's talk about you because there's so much attention put on your children. Um, tell me about your day when you get up. What, what kind of day do you have? What does it entail? In the morning, the focus is usually get going. So if we have an appointment or a place that we need to be, we do the necessities. We get dressed, we brush our teeth, and we eat, and those are the focus things. And uh, in my mind, I always know that there's a good chance somebody might be upset or not cooperate, so it's pack your patience kind of day. If we're home, um, we get right to work because that gets them moving and, and instead of um, the lackadaisical hanging out at home and then it's hard to get them in the process of 
positive activities. When you say so, get to work, it's because you're actually teaching. Uh, you're, yes. You're doing the homeschooling. Yes. Which so, is incredibly challenging as well. Yeah. We pack right up and move right to the kitchen table and uh, the three-year-old sits and does his puzzles occasionally he cooperates and then my older son will open up his books and we start doing our education so did you have to give up work to be able to do that um, I actually was laid off but it was the best thing I was able to do this and, and help accommodate for the needs right so but it's still financially challenging as well it's incredibly finance uh, excuse me challenging and then we add in the food factor they have lots of allergies so we can't just go to the grocery store go to a, a store that may be less expensive we've gone all organic all natural we um, we have removed certain things that bother us and and also um, meet their dietary needs so I have to go to several different stores to pick up different things and that's also a necessity when we go to the store it's usually for groceries it's usually just to get what I need to feed them so and with all that how how's, how does this make you feel meaning that um, how do you feel do you feel frustrated do you ever feel like you just wanna you know I don't know Carolyn what do you how well, would I I'm say? just wondering what you do for yourself I mean do you get out a lot with your husband are you Megan or are you the mom of these two children that you just devote everything, all you have. And um, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you are such a beautiful woman and sometimes all the attention is focused on the children. What do you do for yourself? Do you get to do? Uh, and I have recently established a I get one Saturday to myself. Um, it was getting to the point where I don't have family, so I don't have near me to call and say, I really need a break. Can you take them for a couple hours? And um, with their behaviors, it's not like a lot of friends know how to manage them in a way I feel comfortable, so sure. I'd rather take it on myself. So the, you never get a break? Pretty much, until this newly established, I'm going to take myself out and it's going to happen. Because it was to the point where weekends didn't exist because they're both home with me, they're my sidekicks 24-7. Right. Yeah. Um, and the frustration does, does get to you and then you take it to them and that's not fair to them. So. Well, we're um, all human. I yeah, mean, that's right. how, you know. Yeah. Well, we're definitely going to take care of that. We went, we took Megan for a wonderful makeover and um, much deserve it. As all mothers, you know, like yourself, you need to come back and, and uh, own yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so okay. So, welcome, and we'll go to Thank break, you. and we'll, uh, we'll. Okay. On the other side of the break, Carolyn and Megan will talk about fast and easy ways to feel and look great. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Carolyn Melillo, and joining me now is Megan. Megan's son, Connor, struggles with ADHD, and with all of her attention helping Connor, Megan, like many other mothers, forgets to pay attention to all of her needs. So, Megan, welcome. Thank you. So how did you um, enjoy this experience, going out and focusing just on yourself? It took a few minutes of adjustment <laughs> to uh, get used to the catering, but I very much enjoyed spending time and being able to um, focus on what I needed as opposed to what everybody else in the family needs. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And we went out and we got you a mini wardrobe for under $250. Mm -hmm. You've got many shirts. Um, that all go with jeans, boots that were $24. This beautiful, can we just turn you around a little bit? From Target, wonderful little um, jacket, a little sexy, it's got a little kick. Um, and what about your makeup routine in the morning? What do you do? There's no makeup routine. <laughs> no makeup routine. And what did you say after you put on just a little mascara and, and, and a little bit of color on your eyes? How did you say it made you feel? Oh, it's great. It's amazing how much a little bit can really uh, make you feel so much better. And now you, you homeschool your children so you don't have a lot of time, but how easy is it just to put on a pair of boots, we have leggings, and just a fun top. I mean, just it's as easy. It's better than the PJs I end up in some days when we don't leave the house. So uh, this makes you feel like your day is accomplished as opposed to being in PJs some that's days. That's wonderful. So. so do you think that you'll, you'll stay with this wardrobe? You look absolutely fantastic. Absolutely, yes. Well, that's I love it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Megan. Thank you. Don't go away because on the other side of the break, Dr. Rob and I are going to make the kitchen pasta with Chef Pasquale Masters.
Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo. Joining me is my wife, Carolyn, as always, and Pasquale Masters, chef at Pasta Pomodoro. Um, we have talked about this before, but one of the biggest challenges that people face now are dealing with issues with gluten sensitivity, dairy sensitivity, egg sensitivity. And I can tell you that, you know, I've worked with hundreds of families and that is just something that scares the heck out of them, that it's, it can be such a challenge. So to have a place where people can go and basically every meal is gluten free. Pretty much. So, uh, you know, that, that is really great because they can go there, they have takeout. So tell us about your restaurant, Pasta Pomodoro. Well, what happened was is I wanted to be able to give the opportunity for those with the dietary restrictions to be able to go out and dine again with friends, family, and not have to be treated any different because they are no different. And what happened was is I came across a doctor from CHOP. Her name was Dr. Verma. And she is the one that I would blame most for having a gluten-free menu. Now, she's a gastroenterologist. Correct. And so she deals with a lot of people with celiac disease. Correct. And also increasing numbers of people with just what we call gluten sensitivity. And you even had a personal experience with your son, right, that you my told us? My, my son, who's eight now, but at three months old, he almost died. Wow. On two of the Gerber's first food, the wheat puffs. And he went into anaphylaxis. So from shop. eating wheat, puff, wow. wheat puffs? Yes, at three months old. All right. And uh, it was a doctor, actually it was a pharmacist in my hometown in Busan, Korea. Never met my son, but he put him on an allergy-free diet. So I went around, I went through this route, not because of my child, not because my partner has celiac, but just to give the opportunity for those that miss dining out again, or do not want to be treated like they're, they shouldn't go out to eat. Right. And again, like it's very difficult, very challenging, two parents working, to be able to just go out or maybe even to order and pick up, and you said it may be delivered soon. So why don't you go through some of the, some of the things we see here in front of us. All right, what we have is like what they miss most, garlic bread. They can Fantastic. have garlic bread prior to the meal. I have here you go, to. Carolyn. Thank I you. Know. Thank fryer you. we have is a gluten-free fryer. That's all we have. Mm. So they're going to get the mozzarella sticks. When's the last time they had a breaded mozzarella stick? No, I, I, you wouldn't even breaded think Breaded chicken, it. chicken parmesan. So good. Even the fried calamari, which isn't on this table. Then they can have bruschetta. When's the last time you had bruschetta? Now again, it's gluten-free. Gluten right? Free. Completely gluten-free, and the fryers are gluten-free, so they don't have to worry about contamination. Correct. You cannot taste the difference at all. No. You would never know. I, tastes exactly the same. It's better, actually. And then the gluten-free garlic bread is also the bread that we use for our focaccia sandwiches. And we also offer the long roll, so if they wanted to get like a cheesesteak or a meatball sandwich, chicken parm sandwich. Focaccia. Now we have the pizza. We do have regular pizza on our menu, but the gluten-free pizza can be accommodated with any of the toppings on the regular pizza because they're all gluten-free. The toppings. What kind and of also, cheese is that? Yeah. And that is a fresh mozzarella, so that would be your margarita pizza. But we also carry, for those with the dairy issues, uh, Daya uh, vegan soy cheese. Great. And yeah, I assume that you use that here also with the Parmesan. On the Parmesan, I did. Right. Okay. And then uh, we have the cheese ravioli. Some of the pastas that we use at the restaurant, which is the tinchiata, rice penne, for those with a corn issue. Okay. Mm. Okay. And that is available at your local supermarket. And also, we use a bioglut pasta from Italy, which contains corn, lupini bean, and potato. It has a very nice texture, cooks up nice. Okay, well, you know, one of the things that we were talking about was, you know, the biggest issue is with the crust. But also, you use some flours, and you make flours, or you use flours. And use what, flours. what type of flours do you use? So, I use a very fine flour out of Asia to saute with. And then I use an organic uh, rice flour out of California for the, to bread. Uh, used as a coating for the breaded chicken on below the uh, gluten-free breadcrumbs and okay. also for the fried calamari. Great. And, and that, like I said, is one of the biggest issues I know people and finding that right consistency for the flour makes all the difference in the, in the bread and everything, right? In the bread and then to say if you're making like a demi-glaze sauce, a cream soup, uh, you want to make hot roast beef or a little turkey gravy. Having that flour that doesn't break up, that isn't gritty, that you can't sure. really notice. Sure. So tell us about these desserts because... These I cannot believe they are casein and gluten-free. Well, the strawberry shortcake and the vanilla cake chocolate icing are uh, 
dairy free, casein free, and also um, gluten free. Gluten free. Yeah. Reason why we went the route of a casein free, gluten free cake was um, several years ago. I had a customer that had a child that was autistic mm -hmm. at nine years old. He never had a birthday cake. Oh, wow. So I asked him if we could come up with a cake that was casein free, gluten free. Would you want to do a birthday cake for him? And he said, absolutely. So what was his reaction like when he saw his first birthday cake? He was stunned. <laughs> he didn't know what to do with it. Oh, Can we take awesome. a little taste? You may it take a taste. amazing. I'm going to fight no. you for that. Yes, you are. Okay, it does. Now all I needed is a... Uh, is that is insane. That icing mm. is so good. When was the last time you had a cannoli that not, was gluten-free? Actually, free. not that long ago. Oh, that's gluten-free. Never, never. And the... the, the um, the whipped cream oh is God. dairy, obviously, right? It is actually a uh, soy whipped topping. It's, it's a soy whipped absolutely cream? Absolutely wow. delicious. And absolutely delicious. A Snickers cheesecake. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. Wow. I'll never go back to gluten or casein again. <laughs> and what it is is the, uh, when you're using the rice mm. flour and you're cooking this way, the food isn't processed the same as the way wheat flour is. So you, you don't have to worry about the additives and things like that. Okay. It's unbelievable. Listen, Chef, um, I hope, you know, people come to your restaurant. Um, you're doing a great service, really helping people. We really appreciate you being here, and we hope you come back again sometime. Thank you. Grazie mille, okay. Pasquale. Mille, grazie. grazie. All right. Great. Well, um, we're going to end it here today. We had a great show. We really appreciate all our guests today. I want to thank Carolyn, as always, my lovely thank wife, you. and Megan, who was fantastic. And again, Chef Pasquale Masters. And we will see you again. Remember, never lose hope. And thank you. And we'll see you again on the Dr. Rob Show.